today we have uh, the privilege of uh, our very very own uh, very famous uh, filmmaker mr prasoon sinha with us prasoon ji has been uh, associated with films for a long long time and uh, he has got national as well as international exposure and uh, few of his film you must have seen aaj jile zara company sarkar raja babu so these are a uh, few of the films which he has uh, done apart from the international uh, films also which he has been uh, doing so he has also uh, been featured uh, with kane's film festival in 2009 and uh, that's uh, that's a matter of pride and privilege uh, he has created history by making the first indian digital feature film named kismat ek anokha mor in the year 2009 and also he has made uh, uh, lots many tele serials uh, by the name of uh, sangeet nama mukhya music show sab golmal hai and uh, advertisement films in the area of advertisement films also he has made mo uh, more than 20 advertising films for uh, different uh, companies and uh, featuring many consumer products he is uh, also recognized for his uh, biopic films uh, one of them is mujhe uh, chalte jana hai which han ji sir i had happened to see this uh, also so uh, very nice Achha, you have seen this yes sir and the corporate films also like uh, more than 50 corporate films uh, he has to his credit in national and international circles so uh, he is a man uh, who is being closely associated with the making of films and uh, my dear students and the faculty members it is a privilege for amit university gurgaon i along with my uh, director sir mr manoj sani sir and my entire team from corporate resource center amit university gurgaon we we welcome you sir uh, to this beautiful session and uh, our students look forward to hear from you all that is there to the making of films the language of films as they say so sure. um, this is something we we really look forward to and uh, we hope uh, our students will be able to draw the best from you and look upon you for guidance and uh, taking this further please i hand over the session to you sir thank you thank you very much hi friends welcome to the session and thank you amity industry thank you ruby ji for inviting me uh, in this uh, occasion uh, i am just a filmmaker nothing at all i have not done anything in my life except making films uh, first of all we, as we all know that what is the meaning of language why we use the language the main purpose of using language is only to convey to communicate uh cinema is a visual language and uh, to start the session first of all i'll let you know that cinema is a gift of france to the entire world after i mean innovation of still camera by kotia company uh, right from i think 18 35 in france people have started as experimenting with that camera and doing the things let me start today's session with how and when cinema reached to india the world started witnessing cinema during the year 1895 96 when the french business men duo popularly known as the lumiere brothers most of you have heard his name had finally developed cinema and produced number of short duration newsreel type of films make their various scene and sent them to different parts of the world to popularize their innovative product called cinema in this process on july 3rd 1896 cinema reached india by one of that teens of luminar brothers the exhibition of those films uh, they have selected six films to exhibit in india 
and the exhibition of those films had been arranged before some of the invited audiences inside the hall of Hotel Watson in then called Bombay. The visiting team had started showing their selected six short duration newsreel type of films before those invited audiences inside that hall. Among those six films, there was a film titled The Arrival of a Train. I repeat, The Arrival of a Train. In this film, a train was seen coming on a station where it stopped. Few passengers were seen coming out of the buggies and few were seen boarding inside the train. Then in the next shot, the train started moving on the track towards the camera. As the train looks, as the train took its speed, some of the audiences suddenly started screaming and they ran out of the hall because it looked to them <laughs> as if the train will enter inside the hall, heading towards them. Friends, this was the first encounter by the audiences with the powerful visual language of cinema. This is cinema, a universal language. That shot of the train taken by Lumiere was no more than an ordinary daily event. Having no definite story to tell, lack of elements of drama, but as time kept on moving ahead, soon afterwards, stories began to be told in films. Language of cinema started changing positively. The man who was among the first to create the story in the films, it was none other than the extraordinary innovative film director from America, D.W. Griffith. He realized that since every language needs to have its specific grammar, so the language of cinema must have its own grammar. He credited for developing grammar of cinematic language. I'm talking about the D.W. Griffith. I'm repeating his name. That great make, filmmaker, he was created developing grammar of cinematic language that rests on certain techniques adopted by the camera and the editing were most all invented by the same person, D.W. Griffith. The very first thing what Griffith understood was that just as any story cannot be verbally told in one breath. You cannot just uh, say any story in one breath. Even when it is in written format, sentences, sentences must be arranged one after another to understand the story. That was in, their, in, in his mind. He developed the language of cinema technical in very technical way. For making this process easy, Griffith had developed different camera angles, credited different sizes of shots like close-up, mid-shot, long shot, top angle shot, etc. When close-up was invented, it created a distinction between the drama, theater, I mean, and the films. I mean, you cannot see close-up in theater. I mean, theater in drama. Close up in particular invented to capture a collector's mind, his appearance, other de details of his gestures and expressions. Even today, it is impossible to make a film without using close ups. Even after the techniques developed by D.W. Griffith, Gradually, as time, time kept on passing, many filmmakers started trying different, adding on the different uh, techniques to make the language of cinema, I mean, understandable well. In this way, cinema, as we all know, cinema is a visual language. The language of film is communicated by sequential projection of visuals as per the theme, plot, and story.
This is why even today, many of us enjoy watching silent films, especially the films of Charlie Chaplin. I would like to especially mention the name of Charlie Chaplin because to me, he was one of the brilliant actors ever born on the earth. He narrated his various characters through his immense power of body language and facial expressions. He was master in narrating his many sequences by using his eyes. For example, it's impossible to forget his powerful eye expressions in the clothing sequence of the famous film called City Lights. And his body language when he was playing with big balloon of the world map in the film Hitler. He was playing the role of the Hitler in that film. Though his film, the tone of his films always around the comedy, comic sequences, but Charlie Chaplin expresses those comic moments the way one can touch the heart of the viewers. Okay, now, let me ask one question. Have you, any of you, ever watched a foreign film without having no subtitles? And also, if the language is not known to you, when you were watching that such film, you enjoy the watching films and you, and you understand the film. Have you ever thought who made you to understand? Now, let me put an example, a very short example. You just imagine what I'm going to speak now. I'm describing a sequence of scenes. Imagine you are watching a film in a theater. You see an old man, an old ailing man is lying on a cot, coughing, moaning. Few candles are lighted by the side of his bed, which fills a small room, a small tidy room with lights. Few people of different ages are sitting on the ground around the cot of that ailing old man. Everyone is looking sad. You are also hearing the stormy wind sound, which is coming from the outside. This is the one sequence. In the next long shot, you are seeing the hut from the outside and blowing a stormy winds inside the hut, around the hut. Cut to the shot, you see the close-ups of those lighted candles, flickering flames, which suddenly go off. Cut to the long shot. We see the hut in darkness, listening the screaming and crying sound coming out of the, out of that hut. Immediately you understand that the old ailing man is dead now. Am I right? Can anybody answer? Hello? Hello? Students? Hello? Students, anybody wanted to answer? Uh, sir is asking you something? No, the, the sequence which I have described right now uh, yeah, Ritu, Lalit sir, Ritu is uh, raising her hand. Please, can you um, unmute her? Yes. Yeah. yes, yeah, Ritu, tell. tell yeah, Prasun sir, yeah, we, we understood what you were trying to say. You okay, know, you know, thank you, thank you. Long, short, short, uh, and the sounds and the pictures, we get the. No, no, I, what I, I have narrated right now, I have narrated a sequence. Uh, to justify the language of power of the language of the cinema. Yes, because, it was clear. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. So I'm next. You understood correctly. Okay, thank you. This is because the visual narrative power of the language of the cinema. Because there you have not listened to any dialogue. That old man was not saying, please help me. I'm ailing. I'm 
are about to die, nothing at all. It is just a scene without any, uh, with the sound effects, but without any dialogue. Like theater, cinema also has two sides of its language. One is known as the functional, and another is known as the artistic. The functional part of cinema takes care of the expressions, and the artistic part of it takes care of the further extensions of the cinematic language. Like any other language, the language of cinema also keeps on changing with the tune of the time towards more betterment. Change is the rule of language. This is why, comparatively, if you see the language of film before and after the first talkie film of India, Alamara, which was released in 1930, and films from that time to the films released afterwards that cinema have witnessed, you must have witnessed drastic changes. The growth of cinema worldwide keeps on changing. Nowadays, most of films being made in Hollywood are based on narrating the story with loaded VFX, that is a visual effect, and animated scenes and sequences. I mean, the sole purpose of other spoken written languages and the language of cinema have meant to cater to the need of communication that we all know. But on the contrary, the language of cinema has always been innovative and it very easily adopts the changes occurring in and around the global region with the changing tone of the time and the technology. Whereas other spoken or written languages lack to adopt such innovative changes. Cinema, the language of cinema keeps on changing. Even today, you might have seen so many films uh, which is not similar to the technique, technique wise or expression wise, if you compare with the older film, the Mother India, or any other for that, I mean, 10 years, 20 years back films, or maybe the more back films. The power of cinematic language. Now, I would like to tell you how power of cinematic language is being used politically also. The power of cin cinematic languages attracted Russian leader Lenin so deeply that after the revolution in Russia, he realized that cinema could be used in a powerful way in the matter of his propaganda. From there, Russian films had started gaining its popular place in the world cinema. Before that, Russian films were nowhere existed. But it was after the Lenin time, it has started getting the popularity worldwide. From there, from there, Russian films had started gaining its popular place in the worldwide. And filmmakers like Eisenstein, Pudovkin, and Devzineko earned their prestigious place in the world cinema. Among all three, Eisenstein was the most talented innovator. Following the D.W. Griffith system of editing, he innovated his famous art of montage, his famous technique, which is known as the art of montage, where he believed if different shots could join to one after another in such a way where a whole new meaning would emerge. That was his, he tried in his film, and he named it as a montage. I'll let you know more about the montage. Imagine if you are seeing one, uh, you must have seen so many titles of the, uh, during the titles of the films, so many shots from the film or maybe the, from the serial put together and titles goes on it. 
just watching that you have you can make i mean imagine that what kind of film or the serial you are going to watch that is known as a uh, montage montage has got so many ways to express if i <laughs> speak on montage types of montage this session would be very short for me anyways have you understood i have uh, i still remember uh, when i was uh, watching the old film of dilip kumar of course i was kid i was not knowing anything about the cinema the technique or the language anything i was just watching that film in a theater and while watching that film as it proceeded on towards the climax i started weeping inside the theater why i mean what is i know that whatever is going there on the screen is not life but even though i started uh, weeping i mean tears were there in my eyes still i remember and lots of people lots of spectators must have have this experience but why we cry or we weep after seeing a film during seeing the film in the theater only because the language of cinema is so 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 strong that attacks you your mind your emotions your everything and you be there full heartedly whatever you are watching on the cinema always remember whatever cinema is a recorded form whatever you are watching on the screen had already recorded months or years back but it it is in a story form sequential form so enjoy that now as cinema proceed on the language of cinema depends on two major factors one is the photography that is the cinematography the camera part and other one is the editing these are the two more i mean most important uh, tools for the way of making films which make you understand the language of cinema while watching while you are watching any films now i would like to take this session further ahead and let me speak something about the some techniques of editing which you will realize that it is why it is used and what is the purpose uh, one is the dissolve to reveal dissolve to reveal is a you are watching of any scene and if there is a you have to show that the entire sequence should be lesser because the cinema if has got limited time period two and a half hours or three years whatever so you have to use this technique called dissolve to reveal one is a flashback if i am speaking about myself suppose i am on the screen you are watching a film where i as a as an actor is speaking something about myself and suddenly i started saying that in my childhood you know i i was like this that 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 cut to the flashback it compact you the entire sequence make it shorter and make you understand also that what i am as a character the third one is a time lapse what is the time lapse it's very interesting to understand suppose two friends are speaking inside a room it's evening you know and one friend is narrating anything about him or the business or maybe the planning maybe 
if, if he, I mean, anything for a longer period. If the scene will go on, go on, go on, the audience will feel bored about that. What exactly the maker does, what technique they adopt, He, uh, when you might have seen the watch, if it is six evening, slowly, 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 one after one dissolving, it is showing seven morning. Within a two minutes span, it is showing more than 13 hours uh, time. And you, that scene makes you believe that whatever you're seeing, this person is speaking to the friend since the last 13 hours. Or maybe you might have seen that friend goes on sleeping and all. So that 13 hours can be combined together in the two minutes, or maybe the less than that. That technique is known as the time lapse. It's all of the language, you know. One is a deep focus. Because one thing I would like to tell you here, the cinema, whatever I am, we are seeing on the screen is the time and space, nothing else. The story, whatever we are watching on the screen is defining particular time and space. So time lapse is there for that. Another one very important aspect of the editing is a deep focus. What is the deep focus? You imagine you are watching a few characters speaking just uh, near the camera, closer to the camera, in a room. And just adjacent to the same room, you are seeing that few people are standing and talking or doing something in the adjacent room of this room. The two rooms happening you are seeing at a time. This is known as a deep focus. You might have seen in so many films this technique. This also describes the language of cinema to make you understand that these two events are, are happening at the same time. So these are the things, you know. Now, I would like to take you to some of the filmmakers worldwide. You might have heard most of the, the names and their films also. There was a absolutely outstanding filmmakers called, called Orson Welles. Orson Welles, 40s. It, uh, he was making films in the 40s. He made the outstanding film Citizen Kane and Magnificent Amberson. These are the two films. Citizen Kane is a course material in many film schools around the world. Then I would like to name the another film outstanding filmmaker Kurosawa. He was from the Japan. He made a film in 1950 called Rashomon. It was a film, three characters describing, describing one story from their own point of view. Very interesting film. Technically very sound and very easy to understand. But the way that the three people narrating their point of view, that is the crux, I mean, that is the USP of this film, Rashomon. If you happen to see this film, you try to have the, maybe the DVD or from yeah, other source also, Rashomon. Then the France, from where the cinema started. There was a person called Truffaut. I have just said you that 
editing method make you understand the language of the particular scene, whatever is running on the screen. Truffaut was a very famous filmmaker from the France. In 1939, he made a film called 400 Blows. It was a story of the orphanage where boys of 15, 16 ages were kept in a very uh, constrained manner. Suddenly, at the end of the film, during the end of the film, one boy from that flee from that uh, orphanage. And he started running, running, running. The camera is taking the track shot along him, showing him running on this on the screen. You as if he was just trying to flee from the that place faster. Suddenly he stops and see there is a mountain and the big ocean is before him. It, he stopped there. It means that is the end of the road. He cannot go ahead. Then he turns again towards the camera and he started running. As he started running, the shot freeze. Still, I mean, the shot freeze. And the boy is looking at the camera. If you are looking at camera, it means you are looking at the audience. The boy is looking at the audience and that particular scene without speaking anything is saying to the audience, look, you people are uh, responsible for our agony. This is the language of cinema. I mean, I mean fantastic. Then another, I would like to another uh, mention here the another filmmaker from the France, which is known as the Jean Luc Godard. Godard is a very famous even today. But he was an experimental filmmaker. The problem of most of his films that if you you have habit to watch the story in a linear form, sequential manner, you will not enjoy his film because he used jump cuts. Jump cuts means one shot here, the and suddenly the another shot not relevant with each other or not attached with this that shot then. This is his way of making films. His one, of, one film was very famous even today, known as The Breathless. So he gave the uh, term called jump cuts in editing. Now, let's talk Indian, about Indian films, which created the history worldwide. The, First name I would like to tell here with the respect that was a Satyajit Ray. I'm sure you all have heard of his name. He was the person who made Indian cinema on the international level. Satyajit Ray's first film, Pathir Panchali. So powerful even today, I would like to tell you all, my dear friends, you must watch Pathir Panchali if you happen to watch it. Pathir Panchali is again one film which is being taught in London film schools, New York film school, I mean, everywhere in the world. It is such a powerful film. Then another filmmaker, again from the Bengal, he was known as the Vithik Khatak. He was also making films during the time of the Satyajit Ray. But his making 
of films were different from Satish Grey. He migrated from the East Pakistan that time to Bengal after the independence. So the pathos of that East Pakistan and the partition, the pathos of partition, I, I would like to judge him, is always there in his film. His most famous film, even today, is Mege Deka Tara. A star hidden in the cloud. That is the meaning. And the another is the Tista Ekti Nodir name. Tista is a river which is flowing between now Bangladesh and the Bengal part of the India. So Tista Ekti Nodir name. Tista, the name of a river. In Hindi cinema, the first revolution or the uh, internationally acclaimed film was Mother India, made by Mahabub Khan. Mother India, many of you must be knowing that Mother India was the first film which was nominated, nominated for the Oscar from India. Okay, it didn't get the Oscar. Doesn't matter, but it was the first film nominated from India to Oscar. Then came uh, 80s, 90s, 80s. 80s era of Hindi film was known as a revolutionary era where parallel cinema, the growth of parallel cinema started. And the first credit goes to the Director Shyam Benegal. Shyam Benegal, I'm sure you all are aware of his name, might have seen so many films made by Shyam Benegal, I'm sure. But the Shyam Benegal trilogy, Ankur, Nishant, and Manthan, this is all three films, I mean, that shown on the screen the status of the women in our Indian society. The Ankur and the Nishan based on the feudalism and the farmers, uh, the poor farmers, I mean, laborer rather. The, one of the labor wives, I mean, affairs and all. Mantan is based on the uh, milk revolution which happened in the Anand. Uh, even today, it is known as the Amur. That was also started with the woman cooperative of Anand. There is a place in uh, uh, this Gujarat called Anand. These are the, and after that, he made another, uh, so many films like Sardari Begum and uh, many films also. Then I can name here. The another filmmaker called uh, many. I mean, to me, the recently I admire one film which I have. It is released on the Netflix. If you have not seen that film as if as of now, must watch this film. The film is titled as the. Uh, what is this? I'm sorry, bad memory. <laughs> the film titled as the Pagalate. Very recent. I mean, last week it released on the Netflix. Why I am mentioning Pagalate here? Because the language of Pagalate as a cinema is so, I mean, methodically maintained. First of all, cinema whatever we are watching on the screen is based on a screenplay. Before making the film, cinema is being penned down on the papers, which is with the scenes and the dialogues, which is known as the screenplay. We, you all must be knowing it. The screenplay of that film, the characterization of each small to the major actors, 
actresses. It is a story of a young person died, and the wife of that dead man uh, married the, uh, that person just three four months back, and she became widow. It's a lovely film to watch. You can watch it with your family inside your house. Well, you must watch the recent film. I'm right. So uh, I'm uh, yeah. As per the time, it is left ten minutes. Anything? Anyone? I mean, I think uh, I have not uh, bored you all. No, sir, not at all. It has been very engrossing. No, no. I mean, was it something uh, positive? Whatever I have said about the language, but so that so, is. Uh, can I see students, students uh, uh, on the screen? Because yeah, I, I would love to see them. Yeah. Uh, Actually, the mode of the whole setup uh, in a in a, in a university is such that the rights uh, are not given. Only when they have to ask. I'll just announce, uh, students. I'd uh, request you to please uh, make this session more interactive. Please ask yeah, yeah, questions uh, that you uh, wish to ask, sir. Any queries, any anything relating to the making of film or anything which sir has shared. Language. Yeah, the language. Well, of whatever I have, I have spoken. If anyone has anything to ask related to that, feel free to ask. I'm there to answer you. Yeah, students, um, please come on. Please raise your hand so that we can unmute you and uh, we can take this uh, session forward. I didn't see any raised hands. Oh my God. It means I, I, I was very no, boring, no. you know. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, I it was very boring. It was not a yeah. useful session, I think so. Uh, yes, Aishman Datta. Aishman. Lalitsa, can you unmute Aishman? Yes, Aishman, please uh, speak. Yes, so actually, I wanted to know that <clears throat> sometimes we hear of in Delhi Times and in newspapers that some of the actors have ego issues or they come to set on set late and they 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 charge a high fees and sometimes it's above the budget. So how does one handle that and does that come in between the making of the film? Okay, Aishman, uh, I'll answer you. It's a <laughs> uh, very common question. But let me know, whatever I have spoken since last more than 40, 45 minutes, is it uh, useful for you? Yes, sir. Aishman? Yes, sir. It is useful because even I am uh, now, uh, it was very useful to understand like the process of uh, un of making a film and uh, what is the thought. No, process. I have not spoken anything on the process of the film, you know. It's a, it's a, it, it, it requires series of webinar, you know, if you uh, want to know about the process of the film. What I have spoken and I was supposed to speak was on the language of the cinema. I have tried to the best of my knowledge in a very constant, given constant time frame to make you all understood about the language of the cinema. So first of all, do you have any, anything to ask whatever I have spoken right now? Out of that, any, any, any question, any question. Because I would love to have so, a question. I wanted to know that what is your opinion on the current, like you spoke about Satyajit Tre and his vision for cinema, but I wanted to know like what is your opinion on the like OTT um, platforms and the in in um, like the recent trend of um, of cinema which is coming in uh, right now. Like, uh, do you think that? Um, that the quality of filmmaking has sort of like deteriorated or has it improved? And um, because like we see old Balaji and so the, or do you, do you feel like the content of the films these days has deteriorated or has it improved? Content, since the birth of the cinema till today, contents 
keep on changing, you know. You have asked about the OTT. Cinema is unbeatable, first of all. OTT got the popularity only because of the this COVID-19 syndrome, whatever is going, because, and especially due to the lockdown period, because we all are restricted inside the house so that started giving you the entertainment, sitting inside your drawing room or the living room, watching it on the television, like any other uh, biology uh, television serial or whatever. First of all, you may make sure, Aishman, that nothing is going to beat cinema, because cinema is a very, very, very powerful language. Come to the OTT. OTT is nothing, uh, a format which you are watching on the television, that's all. Yes, of course, some of the OTT films have got very, very strong content, strong, very outstanding treatment. One of them, for among all, all one of them, I have just narrated is the Paglet. You must watch this Puglet. I mean, watch this Puglet not to entertain yourself, but also watch this Puglet that what, how characters are being developed, you know. If a writer is writing any uh, character before the, before filming, what are they? I mean, the dialogues, the interpersonal relationship, and the flow of the cinema, I mean, flow of the story till the end. In recent time frame, this is, a, this is, a, this is outstanding content-wise also and the treatment-wise, acting-wise also. So this is the same. I mean, the watching film on the OTT, watching film on the theater. But in theater, what you say, you see the more than, uh, a bigger more than the life life size, you know, anything on the screen. And uh, in a dark room, you are, you create your relationship with yourself and the characters there on the screen. Whereas watching film on the OTT, you are watching anything, say your, I mean, sorry, girlfriend called you or the, uh, the friend called you up. And so, Suddenly, the tempo or the system of watching is, is got broke the, that time. You put it on the pause, something like that. Then you again play mode. That particular, you are not attached with that cinema. But while watching the film in the theater, you are not supposed to talk, you are not supposed to walk, you are not supposed to do anything except watching the film. It is a tremendous effect, you know. And uh, now, Aishman, are you there? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you asked me for the fee structure and all. You know, from the very beginning, those films made by the Lumiere, Lumiere brothers were businessmen. They were not a creative person. They took, they understood the future of cinema, how they would earn out of selling these cinemas. So they took it as a business point of view, as an industry. Uh, nothing to do with the creative and anything. So cinema is a business, of course, lots of money. You have to, our maker has, I have to put in to make during making it the whatever charges the actors charge is very personal matter you know why he or she is charging that much or little or higher if films of Salman Khan or Shah Rukh Khan sells more definitely 
they know for that matter akshak kumar also and the uh, amir also they know that the producer is earning out of me okay if you are earning out of me 400 crore give me 100 crore i mean recently uh, the sharukh khan charged 100 crore as his performance fee from the makers of pathan the coming films of course uh, yashraj is making that film 100 crore so it is very personal it has got nothing to do with the cinematic aspect in it uh am i okay with you ashman yes sir yes sir hello yeah. anything else you want to ask me so but uh... so but like doesn't the market uh, sentiment dictate the actors fees like if he's not able to uh, attract a crowd of uh, people to his cinema hall then how can he charge such high amounts like if they don't not... charge, they don't I, I've, i've told you they don't charge high amount i mean you cannot say that aishman khurana should charge the, the amount what salman khan is charging no not at all because making of the salman or sharukh film requires lots of money than the aishman khurana's money you know so it is a business it is a business so i mean so this is very dear and i mean the, if if any any actor or actresses film doesn't do nice on in the theater they don't charge much because nobody is going to give him or her that amount Okay, Aishman. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we have one Thank more you, student. Uh, Thank you, Aishman. Uh, yes, we sir. have one more student, uh, Ritu Saklani. Ritu, are you there? Okay. Hello, yes. Ritu. Yeah, uh, Prasun sir, I would like to ask you uh, when there is a film. We have talked about the language of films. Okay. But uh, sometimes we have films which are adapted yeah. from books. Can, can you speak a li- uh, little? Sorry to disturb you. Can you speak a little louder? Because yeah. I'm not hearing you. Uh, we have films which are adapted based on books. Okay. So in this case, how does the language change from the book to the film? Who has the final say about adapting the uh, language of the book into a film? What kind of changes? Would I appreciate. It's a very. intelligent question ritu uh if suppose let's talk about the charachand novel devdas have you heard of it yes sir yes hello yes sir i have heard it yeah hello ritu yes sir uh, uh for that matter any any novel novel is a, a written format of this story cinema is a visual format of the story there are different uh, aspects of the presentation while reading novel if suppose one character called ram singh and uh, the writer is writing that ram singh ek chor hai wo suresh ke ghar gaya usne uski ghadi mej pe dekhi उसने उसको उठाया जेब में रखा बाहर निकला तो उसको सोचा कि यार दोस्त के साथ ये ठीक नहीं है पता नहीं उसके रोंगटे खड़े हो गए ऐसा सोच के वो वापस आया घड़ी वहीं रख के चला गया सपोज दिस इज द पार्ट ऑफ द स्टोरी ओके सो यू इमेजिन राम सिंह एज पर योर imagination the same ram singh is a different to me and different to you different to ruby ma- ma'am and different to any re- uh, reader mota ho sakta hai patla ho sakta hai gora ho sakta hai kala ho sakta hai whatever but the same ram singh is putting that character on the screen it is that ram singh which you are watching whether you like it or reject it but that is it so your imagination is being a snatch from you and whatever you are watching there is the is written by the uh, screenplay writer and created on the screen 
by the director cinema is the director's medium you know always director is the captain of the ship so that way and now uske rongte khade ho gaye it is a kind of what jisko hindi mein kehte hain bimb symbol rongte khade ho gaye means okay wo thoda socha ki yaar nahi karna chahiye but in cinema you cannot show that rongte jo hai wo close up low khada ho gaya nothing at all so there the narration on the screen would not be like uske rongte khade ho gaye must be some facial expressions and anything that to like to show but here while you were uh, reading uh, that novel about the ram singh's character about that event don't take away okay you understood the chacha so socha ki yaar aisa nahi karna chahiye good that is the way am i okay yes, with sir, you ritu yes sir clear thank you sir no i appreciate i appreciate so this thank one thank you thank you ritu and uh, we have one more student uh, riya vergis so she uh, sir is wanting to ask in your opinion does expression overpower empower or demean the script in any manner uh, riya uh, are you there online riya lalit sir can you unmute riya yes ma'am yeah riya please uh, you can again ask your question uh okay good afternoon sir i just wish to ask that afternoon. does a uh, script overpower empower or demean uh, uh sorry expression overpower the power of the does a, does expression overpower empower or demean a script as in uh, like if we look at cliche karina kapoor of early age she is tend to be taken as someone who was over expressive and people used to uh, Lose upon the interest upon the script, whereas uh, you talked about Puglet. I watched that movie on Netflix. So, in that movie, every expression of uh, Sanya Malhotra was on point. Be it a small giggle, be it a uh, small look, or one tear that uh, she drops, but everything was on point. But uh, do you feel that being over expressive, some or the other way, ruins the script or anything, the dialogue delivery or anything? over expression over acting is always taken as a, a minus part for any actor or actress that way but if a director because as i have told i am right away that the director is the captain of the ship if the director of that film feels that no this over expression will go Uh, well with the character then the actor or actress gives his or her over expression but over expression is always i mean so, the sanya malhotra's expression in the entire film is so under control so under control that she goes inside the skin of the skin of that character i appreciate but as you asked about the karina kapoor or any for that matter any uh, karina kapoor is a very good uh, uh, actress for me very powerful actress but any other actor or actress who believes in the projecting over expression on the screen uh, is not good but the fault lies with the director you know fault lies with the director if the director admits and if the if you were watching a film and you see that are yaar it's a bahut zyada over kar raha it's the fault of the director not the actor okay okay sir okay yeah thank you sir well thank you any other student uh, i would request all the students uh, please uh, uh, be active and if you feel that uh, there yeah yeah ask me ask me anything friendly don't yes. don't think that i am something else i am among you all students any other question if you feel uh, relating to film making and the language of film uh, you wish to ask our special guest uh, mr prasoon sinha uh, please come forward raise your hand or uh, type in the chat box the way it's comfortable for you please let me know um, 
if there is no other question then uh, we would like to wind up this beautiful session and uh, i hope uh, we get further uh, more uh, such opportunities to interact with you sir anytime, and uh, and we we will definitely get back to you on more because uh, i see lots of enthusiasm in our students the way they have come up and interacted with you with their queries and questions and i'm sure they have learned a lot in this small session that we had the fortune of having you with us today with the mit university uh, haryana uh, is thankful to you for taking out time your precious time and uh, sharing those beautiful thoughts on the journey of the film making uh, with our students from uh, mass communication thank you so much sir thank you very much